Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be bringing you five tips that can help you get better at macro. These tips are not just your standard make villagers or um, play fast castle or whatever. These are tips that are designed to help you with the micro aspects of macro and the overall aspect of macroing. What strategies are we going for and how can we best approach games so that we don't screw up our macro. So from optimal resource management and smart scouting to sort of knowing exactly when to tech up, uh, these tips should help you get better in general and sharpen your strategy. So yeah, enjoy the video. Whenever we are playing strategies that involve gathering food and wood, we want to think about, okay, how do we structure our economy if we are a farm sieve? Farm sieves are sieves like Atri, like Byzantines, like the English in specific, and we're going to take a look at the English here. So this is a standard longbow push. What you'll find is when you build your farms as English, you don't have to build them in strange positions. You can actually build them very, very close to your wood line. And this is also true if you're playing something like HOE with Aachen Chapel. You want to build your farms up against your lumber camp to minimize the walk time between your wood and your food. So you can just rally onto the wood line and have, whenever you have wood floats, those villagers go onto food. That's a very, very good way to naturally start your farm transition without having to all of a sudden build eight farms. And you'll see this happening right here. So as you can see, the longbow push is starting. This is an English mirror, so it's only longbows. Here comes the mill, and slowly already now, the villagers are being rallied onto the wood line, and now the farms are being constructed by woodvilles. This is not food villagers from the sheep. These are wood villagers constructing these. And so having a setup like this, where you delete the lumber camp as you go deeper and deeper into the wood line, you can then expand and not have as much idle time from walking to different resources or to a mill on the opposite side of the TC. And therefore, you will have a much smoother macro. First rallying onto the wood line, then going on the farms. As we can see here, the lumber camp has been constructed. So the secondary one. And now we removed the old one, we deleted it by using the delete key, and then we added in more farms afterwards. So now we have eight farms plus ten, so ten farms in total around this mill, and that is enough for us to say, okay, this game is probably good for that 11 minute push that I wanted to create here with my longbows in the front. Simply by having an economy like this, I haven't moved my economy more than 10 tiles or something like that. And that's probably the most efficient way that you can construct your farms. The next tip in terms of macro that I want to give you is a tip about how you can often find yourself constructing buildings you actually don't need or making units that are actually not going to help what you're trying to do. This example is a Mongol example where we've already completed a tar rush in the Dark Age and we've managed to take out a mining camp, getting the bouncy, so everything's been fine up to this point. But what ended up happening is, as we got into the Feudal Age, we prioritized getting a second tower. We don't want to make a second tower because this villager never got home, so it never got any resources. That's a lot of idle time on a villager that gathers 40 resources per minute. Maybe that's four minutes where it's not gathering anything. And now this tower is being constructed, but the tower won't do much because it's going to be denied by something like archers. So even if the tower did get up, it would be a really big delay. What you instead want to think about is how do you best fuel your aggressive strategy? If you're going to play aggressive as Mongols, for example, you might not want to go into archers, but if you do, that could have been that tower. And so if you were to make an archer range here, you would be able to full pump archers, and then you would have another unit to add to your composition. Even better, if you were to think about how to best macro split this as Mongols, you have your stone, but you end up double producing Keshiks, whereas you could have been double producing archers and getting a lot more out of that. So do you need the Keshiks in the situation? Probably not, because you're going to be diving into a wood line. What could you have done instead? Well, you could have gone for archers, used your Falcon, gotten the vision on the wood line, and this archer play, where maybe where you have 10 archers, similar to like when you push with Lombos, you could then push in, snipe the villagers, and then build up a good archer mass and spear mass so you could take out something like Knight Archer for cheaper resources without having to invest into cavalry that will not be able to do damage. I want to talk a little bit about how to best expand one's economy. We often think of our economy as pocket resources and farm economies and all these things, but I like to think of economy as mobility. We want to think about our economy as a move onto the map, and we don't want to move in all directions. We want to instead think about, okay, where are most of our resources located, and how can we best go about expanding to those without having to invest a lot into static defenses or units to defend those? So 
pick one side maybe you want to go if your resources are split onto two sides and then preferably pick the side that has the most resources we are looking at a minimap right now where we have the deer up here let me switch to a pen the deer up here and the berries and we have the deer here as well so when I think about expanding, I want to sort of pick a side here. I can say, okay, I have a wood line and I have berries as well. So when I'm going to expand onto the map, I'm going to go this direction. That's going to make it a lot easier for me to defend, even though my resources are kind of forward. Because if I expand both places, I will have to split my army to defend that and my opponent can just run around. So we don't want to do that. Early on, that's a big issue because we haven't walled yet. When we then start walling, it's going to be a lot easier to wall in one side instead of both sides. So instead of having to create walls like this, which is very expensive early, we can then just make one wall like this, a small wall up here, and then everything is fine. To best provide you with an example of how these early walling and thinking about the expansion went, I want to show you the game as well that that screenshot from before was taken from. So this is a very short game. It's only 12 minutes. But what ended up happening was I went for a second TC. I looked at my minimap and I said, OK, I have the most amount of resources in the most compact area to the north, which means I don't need to prioritize walls early because I have the town center to defend. All I need to do is make one tower in the front for the vision. So you can see I have a lot of vision here. I can see my opponents making ramps. And then I can simply defend this area by having my vills close to the front, by having all of my production very close to this area as well. And then if I had more time, I would have walled it as well in the front here if I knew that aggression was coming. But simply just having everything in one spot instead of being in multiple places makes it so that it's a lot harder for your opponents to go and maybe raid your backline had I picked this deer. And that would have caused more confusion for me. So and it's the way you want to do it. You want to think in mobility, in movement. You want to think that's the way I'm going to go with my economy because it's the best way for me to have a minimal amount of investment and in resources uh, into defensive buildings and walls and units in general, because the more you invest into things you don't need, the worse your macro technically is. So try to minimize it. On this picture, you guys can see that we have a spawn down here. And I apologize for the clutter. This is a screenshot from a rec review I did. We can see we have the blue base here and that we've made walls in the bottom side here. These walls haven't secured anything, and all they have really done is made it harder for the opponent to dive onto the wood line with knights. What we could have done instead is what's up been outlined here with orange. We could have made walls like this because it would have secured us two berry patches, a deer camp, and the three stones. And when we when it comes to the expansion part of it, we went to the boar very early, so we also had a lot of idle time for walking all the way over to this boar. What we could have done instead is just say, look, I'm going to go to these deer. These deer are super, you know, easy for me to go to. It's a short distance. And that also means that when I'm making military, they can sort of move that same direction early. I won't need to make more than maybe a tower and then just wall that early. I want to emphasize the strategic aspect of macroing as well. A lot of the times we play a game with a certain strategy in mind, a certain approach. But we also want to think sometimes about, OK, can we change for better? And that will, of course, require a macro shift. If I'm going to provoke my opponent into playing very defensive here against two town center with one TC aggression HRE, then I'm going to find that he's going to play mass archer and that's going to be defendable for him. I had a plan which was I'm going to go one TC all in, but in that plan lied also a macro that was centered around farming. Now, I wanted to quickly shift now into going for a tech up because I know my opponent is going to spend a lot more resources on going for archers and just units in general than I will. And so I will have that tempo advantage from simply not investing into military and his military, of course, not being able to do anything because he will be sitting in his base playing passive and I will be hitting a tech up. This requires me, however, to quickly shift my macro from being a wood, food, and a little bit of gold focus one that is very focused on transitioning into farms for a very efficient economy in feudal to now all of a sudden needing a sudden influx of food and gold. So what has been done here is all of my wood bills that were gathering wood for farms and archers have now been put on gold and the deer. And so whilst there are already farms here, the plan was to have way more. 
But the new strategy, this transition into fast castle all of a sudden to upgrade my existing units and get Burgrave out requires me to do so differently. So what ends up happening here is, sure, I have this army and I'm still going to use it. I'm not going to back, go back into my base until it's unsafe for me to be here. I'm just going to patrol in the front. And then in the meantime, I'm going to macro up for a Burgrave palace. It's very simple. We can see here that my opponent has a lot of archers and that that production isn't really, you know, stopping right now. The impression that I have is that he's going to keep on making archers. So I go up for a Burgave Palace. I quickly grab my ranged armor and my veterancy on my mana arms, as you can see here in the queue. And then I'm just immediately pushing. I have a very sharp timing that I can go for. And macroing efficiently for something like that can be the difference between winning a game or losing it. So really just keep that in mind. If you want to go castle all of a sudden, remember to do it uh, quickly if that is the plan. Because if you're going to keep on making farms, for example, and you could have gone on the deer, that will slow down that timing. Some of the best advice that I got when I was starting and just wanted to get better at the game and had a coach was that he simply told me, try to not play the 2DC or 3TC game. It's simply too complicated if you don't know what you're doing in terms of macro play. And if you don't know when to do it either, doing it in the first place can also lead to just in general more losses. So my best advice is to not have games that look like this, where you're playing with five relics and three town centers. That's simply not going to be feasible for you if you're starting out and trying to understand macro. Instead, switch it up and say, okay, I'm going to play one town center, I'm going to play aggression, I'm going to play fast castle, whatever it might be, but stick to one town center and try to play games that are below 20 minutes. They're simple. They want to play aggressive. They want to go for a push. You Maybe you go for a push for a second at a second town center with rams at 11 minutes, and that's your strategy that you're practicing. Get good at the basics first. Then when you get better at macroing and you can macro one town center play and a fast castle play, and maybe a long one town center game, you can then start to think about, okay, I'm gonna to try to practice two town center play because my one to see macro is good. And then at some point, you will have games that look like this where you're playing massive macro games with, you know, map control being the main focus with economy output being the main focus, but don't do that too early. Because if you do it too early, you'll end up confusing yourself. You'll sit with a bank with 10,000 resources at minute 20, and that's simply not the way to go. So if you don't have the ability to keep your resources low, even when you're in three town center, simply don't do it yet. Focus on one town center.